Well I've marked up my timber and I'm now going to use the bandsaw to take it down into some four inch wide beams and I'm in a bit of a mess in here at the moment so I really need, I'm trying to sort out some things and it's um, a bit untidy but never mind there's enough space just about to work in as always space is quite tight around here anyway we'll, we'll get some band sawing done and see how we go right that's those roughly prepared so at least now I've got material a bit more manageable that I can mark off and then straighten up uh, great things band saws so I have to say it's the best thing I've got tool wise in the workshop now so I've been making the lathe up now I've been planing the wood and joining it all together and I've got a rough outline of what the lathe will look like I've got the tail stock fixed actually to an upright here two nice cross beams I'm just constructing the tensioning part there'll be a crank handle going through these will line up and this will tighten so I've still to make that bit but I've got the actual main structure now underway yeah, I'm, making the, I'm making the headstock for the pole lathe at the moment so I've actually put the arm work in I've bolted three sections of wood together to make the sort of headstock and I've got my arm work there bolted in at the moment I'm just cutting out for a mortise to put the sort of cross wedge in to actually hold it down firm. So I'll, I'll just carry on doing a bit of drilling for that. Right, that's all ready for chiseling out. So I'll chisel that out now and then that'll be ready. Got my crank handle and that's working all right. So all I've done here, I've welded a couple of bolts on the inside of these metal plates and this is just a bit of studding and I've welded a bit on the end here, so sort of a crank cleaver. So that lets me adjust the lathe. It should be alright. And then it just rests on top of the lathe bed there, so these sections both just rest on top of the lathe bed. Okay, well I've just been cutting out one of the mortises here for the base of the pole lathe. And one of my next jobs now is to cut the tenon for the upright so then that will go into the mortise just here and then I'll have some sort of like cross struts to hold this and reinforce it so that it actually holds it all nice and firmly together so I've got to do that for each end to make the legs for each end but the legs will be detachable so I'll be able to unbolt them for transportation which should be very useful also by splitting the lathe into two separate legs and a bed it will be easier to carry around if I want to carry it, say, into a woodland or something. Then it's a lot easier. Here I'm cutting the mortise joints for the uprights using the band. So I'm using quite a rough skip blade in the band, so all four TPI, uh, but it's sufficient for cutting the green oak, and it's a fairly quick way of getting quite a nice joint. I'm not needing to use any guides, I'm just doing this by eye. The um, wood is quite wet, so the tanning in the oak is actually reacting slightly with the bandsaw blade, leaving a bit of a black mark. But again, it really doesn't matter, this is just sort of pole legs ready for use. And the final cuts, and that's a quick tenon joint cut. Very cutting useful. the joints now for the uprights and I'm putting in some like cross battens going across um, double bracing to get a nice firm upright post. So I'm just cutting them and then chiseling them out. So I've just saw a cut and then using a chisel to remove the waste and in this shot I'm removing the wood for the tenon which is for the headstock of the lathe using Harvest mallet and bevel edge chisel. Green oak's wet and very workable so I can do this quite quickly and quite easily. 
it's uh, quite a satisfying wood to work with because everything works so much more easily. Planing here with a wooden plane. The wooden plane doesn't mark and I'm now putting in the coach bolts to hold the whole frame together. These can just be tightened up with a ratchet and they're very effective at holding the whole structure together. Well I've got one more side leg now made up so it's been double braced, lovely and sturdy. I will put some coach bolts through here just to strengthen it but um, that makes a good solid foundation and the lathe bed will come across here. So one more to go. I'm dodging the rain a bit today. Uh, I've got the headstock now made up, so there's the crank handle. And um, I've got the ends both made up. And my next job is to get them properly assembled onto the um, lathe bed. So it's sort of getting there. Okay, so what I've done now, I've bolted the legs, just have wing bolts going through to bolt each of the legs to the lathe bed. So it puts into three pieces my headstock, which is here with a crank handle, <laughs> just fixes onto the lathe bed, rests on these bits, and then is wedged from underneath to secure it. So I'll just do that. That drops in, and then the wedge goes in like that. One can always tap it just to secure it so it's nice and tight. And then the piece of wood to be turned goes in the middle. What I've got to do now is make the tool rest and also make the treadle unit. Well here's a closer view of the lathe assembly and nearest the camera we have the headstock with the crank handle and furthest we have the tailstock with a little point which is just a rounded off bolt and the headstock can slide up and down the bed the bed is just the two beams of wood so I'll just show you how that works now so all you have to do is loosen off the wedge and then slide it to fit your length of wood well this morning I'm making the tool rest and um, just getting that into position so it's a, a plank of wood I've joined together to rest the chisels on and then um, this piece basically bolts to the lathe bed. So it will go on here. And then the only other thing I've got to do is sort out my pole arrangements. And actually I'm gonna go for a bungee just because of space for a long, instead of having a long bouncy springy pole, one can use a bungee. So I'm gonna bolt a couple of uprights on the side of the lathe itself. I'm just making the uprights at the moment for the bungee, so I'm just rounding off the ends so that when one's travelling around with them, they don't sort of cut into things like the car, seats, and what have you. Okay, well, what I'm now doing is I'm making the treadle assembly and I'm using leather straps for the hinges, for the treadle hinges, because they're nice and flexible. And um, I've got some bolts to bolt the actual treadle components together and this is the board that I'd actually stand on when working the treadle that's the actual treadle pedal part so these will get fixed on what I have done is rounded the underside of these treadle levers just put a sort of a, a, a rounded bevel on those and the reason I've rounded that underside is so that when you're working the treadle it doesn't sort of make the whole assembly walk forward. If you had it digging in to the ground, it might tend to walk forward, but that rounding just stops that. So I'll get this assembled and then that's the treadle assembly done. Well, I've got the lathe up and running now and I'm trying it with different um, pieces of wood, trying different chisels on it to get the, the best effect. Um, it's going quite well.